Good day friends, it is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another Tinkercad tutorial. So let's get cracking. Friends, today's lesson is gonna show you how to make an awesome radial gradient that you can use in all your Tinkercad projects. Friends, it starts back here in Code Blocks, so let's click and choose create new code block the first thing i want you to do is name it we're going to name it radial gradient we're going to build with the roof if we bring this piece out and hit play i'm going to speed this up so it goes faster that's going to be a wedge now we need to take this and we need to move it and note the only thing we can do is change the length so we're going to also scale it. I'll explain that all as we go. Let me first show you how we rotate it. Move to modify, bring out the rotate. We're going to rotate around X and 90 degrees. When you hit play, boom, now it is standing up more like the wedge of that cylinder we're going to build. Now to make it look more like that wedge, we're going to use the awesome scale command. I'm going to start by scaling Z and I have just randomly chosen three times and then I'm going to scale Y and I chose four times. If we hit play real quick, you can see now that looks like a piece that would work in a pie chart, but it is sitting at zero, zero. We need to raise it up. So we're going to bring out a move and because 3 times 20 is 60, we're going to raise it up 30. Notice if we hit play, it lines up. Now to make it turn into that sweet cylinder, we're going to bring out the awesome count width. Notice if you bring it right to the top, it'll surround everything. If you're struggling with that, you can just set it down and then grab the wedge and put it in. I'm going to tell you our first number is 24. And if you hit play right now, notice they're all in the same spot so nothing happens. Let me show you how we make it rotate. Bring out another rotate command. This time, you gotta make it rotate around Z. And we've gotta move it back so that it rotates around the tip. We're gonna do that with the math command. I need you to bring this out. And for Y, we're gonna type negative 20. Now the amount we turn is going to change, so we're going to create a variable called turn. Click that create variable, tell it OK, and then we bring out a set and we change it to turn. And we'll leave it at zero. But then underneath the rotate, we're going to change and notice we do have to switch to turn. And this time we're going to change turn by 15. Now the magic of this is we're going to put the variable turn in here for how much it rotates and then bring out a change switch it to turn and then we want to change by 15. now notice i'm giving you these numbers for this one when we hit play you'll notice the wedges turn but they're not the right size so what we had to do was scale over here i did a lot of guess and check and i found the number 0.52 Friends, if we hit play, you'll see those wedges line up pretty sweet. Now, guess and check is pretty awesome, but I've actually got a way to do it with math, and it was shared with me by Tinker Tesla. Friends, follow this closely and let me show you what we need to build. First, let's create a new variable called wedge. Let's set wedge up here. Note we do have to switch to wedge. And then this is going to be how many times it rotates. So I'm going to change this to 36 because that's what's cool is we can adjust it up to 200. Then we need to put the wedge variable in that block. Now building the math works like this. Find your math area. Find your math area and bring out the simple math brick. The first number we're going to type is 80. And this is based on y being 4 times 20. And then we're going to multiply by another big chunk of code. We're going to use an amazing function in trigonometry called tangent. Bring it out. So notice it says tangent of a chunk. And then we're going to build another math chunk. We're going to type 180, switch it to divided by and then we're going to bring in the wedge variable. Friends, this gives us the wicked cool formula to solve for this. It's distance equals that height times the tangent of 180 divided by 
the wedge slice. So what we do is grab this from the middle and drop it in the tangent hole. Notice you've got to do it with the left edge. You can't do it with the right edge, it doesn't work. Now we grab the middle of this and drop it in there as well. So there is our large formula. But remember, we need a percentage. Remember that our entire size is 20. So what we need to do is take this number and divide it by 20. We do that with one more math chunk, set it to divided by, and we grab this large math chunk. Now notice I'm going right here because I can get the whole chunk. It goes right there, and then over here we put the 20. So friends, watch this once again. If you zoom in, notice this is our zoom button. You can see our smallest chunk was the 180 divided by wedge. Then we had the tangent of that. Then we had that height multiplied by all those pieces. And then finally, the entire chunk divided by 20. At this point, you want to grab just about by the 20. Notice I'm below the division sign. And we want to put this edge right there. Simply bring it up and drop it in the hole. Now friends, we've got our wedge, but we do need to change our turn. We're gonna solve that with another math block. We're gonna switch it to division. We're gonna take the full 360 degrees in a circle, and we're gonna divide it by that variable wedge. That way, whatever size we pick, it will all of a sudden fit. Once again, we've gotta put the left edge in the turn block. Friends, when you've got those pieces in and hit play, Bam! Your cylinder will now have the proper sizes. The final step is to add the wicked cool colors. We're going to do that with a variable called gradient. Of course, set your gradient up here. Make sure you switch to gradient when you do. And then we're going to go to the modify command and we're going to bring out the HSB color. And let's put it right before the change turn. And we're going to change the hue. That's what HSB stands for. We're going to change it to the gradient. So go to your variables and drag it in there. And then every time this project runs, we're going to change the gradient. And you can pick the amount. Right now, I'm going to put the number 2. And friends, if you hit play, you have just built your wicked cool gradient cylinder how fun is that every time you pick a different starting spot you get a different color now real quickly the hues work like this zero as you can see a minute ago was red 90 is green 180 is cyan 270 is purple i'll make sure that you can see this on the project so you can check your colors so right now i'm going to switch to 150 right up here with the gradient when I hit play, boom, you can see all of a sudden it draws from that hue and then the gradient changes by two all the way around. Well, let's say you want the gradient to change by 10. You simply change your variable, hit play, and boom, now the gradient adjusts by 10 all the way around. Friends, now you've got your own awesome radial gradient generator. Now let's say you want to learn how to use this. You do that by exporting the shape. I'm going to call this one rainbow. And I will put the word cylinder. I'm not going to tag it and I'm just going to save the shape. Once we've got that saved, of course you could make more than one, but I'm just going to back out and show you how to use it. We are going to go to create and this time it's going to be a normal or traditional 3D design. I'm going to, of course, name it Rainbow, and I'm also going to put the word Frog because that's what I want to build. We're going to go to Basic Shapes. We're going to go to Our Creations, and here is our Wicked Cool Gradient. I'm going to click and bring it out. Notice it's got all those awesome colors in it. And then I'm going to go to Basic Shapes, and I'm going to bring out a large cube. I'll use that in a minute. I am going to change the color ahead of time. That'll help with something I show you in a minute. And then, friends, let's search for the frog. This guy is a ton of fun. Here he is. I'm going to bring him out, and we're going to use what's called an inverse hole. So I'm going to make him a hole. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to make it larger than this shape. So see how this is 80 by 80? So I'm going to shift, stretch, 
and I'm going to type 90 in the box. I can make this guy up to 80, so I'm going to stretch him out into the 50s and 60s. Friends, it's time to align these. We're going to do Shift Select, so I've got those two shapes. Choose a line, make the blue on the boss. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at it from a corner so I can spot that middle and that middle. And then I also want the middle over here as well. And when I hit group, this chunk of blue cube will have that other shape inside it. You can double check by hitting T for transparent. Now we really want it to be a hole so that way it can cut. But friends, I want to do this two different ways. So I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to do control D and I'm going to do shift nudge to move them back for later. So now when we grab the two and do L for a line, once again, we're going to make this the boss. We're going to do middle and middle. As we take a peek, notice my eyeballs are popping out. That is because I forgot to center it this way. Now it is completely inside. And when we do control G to group, check it out. Wicked cool rainbow frog. How awesome is that? I'm going to do D to drop to put him on the ground. And friends, let me show you version, version 2. I'm going to move this into the middle. And this time I'm going to turn my gradient this way. So I'm going to shift rotate 90 degrees. <laughs> Notice I had two right there. I'm going to hit delete so it's back to one. Let's make sure I've only got one of those. And I do. And now let's select them. Choose L for a line. Once again, I want to do center and center look at it from a corner so I can maybe spot that a little better but there it is center now notice it pokes out the front what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly hide this and I'm just gonna stretch it a little longer remember we had 80 to play with so that should be fine show all and it's gonna be fine I just need to do a line one more time L for a line find that corner bingo now it all fits inside with those two shapes selected let's hit group and this time our gradient frog has the colors coming from his center once again d to drop bring the frogs closer together and friends how fun is that friends i want to have just a tiny bit more fun with this i'm going to go back to the basic shapes i'm going to bring out a sphere and i'm going to drop it right on the eyeball because of cruising, we can set it right there. Now I can shift squeeze so it's close to the right size. I'm gonna give it a color. I'm gonna make these a bright pink. And then I can zoom in and I can just push it in where it needs to go. Because of cruising, I can squish, adjust, and get it just the way I want so that this little froggy has all his amazing colors and amazing eyeballs. I'm gonna go over to the other side and bring out another one. Once again, set it right where I want, pick my fantastic color, shift squeeze to get it to the right size, and then simply use the handle to push it in place. How fun is that? If you wanted to make those eyes white, simply shift select them. And then you could do the same thing again once again just dropping the other one in place when you get it close i'll make this one black squeeze it down once again push it into place and then when you get it exactly the way you want change your nudge to a smaller number and once again shift squeeze and use a little cone or the arrows to get it exactly where you want isn't that awesome once again super quick drop it right on the sphere I'm gonna switch it to black ahead of time I've got that setting to point one so I can just squeeze it down when you get it where you want use your cone to push it in bingo froggy with real eyes isn't that awesome now friends when you're done with any project don't forget you can change the background to whatever color you want you can shut off the grid to make it look more cool and of course you can go out to the main tinkercad workspace you can click on your design properties of course give it a name 
Mine, of course, has the description that the tutorial is coming soon. Add some tags really quick. Remember, if you ever want me to see what you do, type the tag HLMT23. I check that tag almost every day to see what cool things have been shared, and of course, I give them reactions. Finally, set your design to public, and then I always choose attribution, no derivatives, because I want you to come up here, follow the tutorial, and gain some epic skills. When you're done, make sure you hit save changes. Finally, friends, don't forget this all started with the awesome code blocks and some sweet math shared by Tinker Tesla. When you're all done, friends, I do want to highlight the Tinkercad gallery. Of course, when you launch it first, you'll see all the staff picks. You can also switch to this button so you can see more and more amazing designs. Remember, if you ever see a design from me, when you click on it, you will find a tutorial and then also reactions are appreciated. Finally, friends, if you shut off staff picks, you will see all of the latest designs in the community gallery. Check it out. There is the one that we just shared. Once again, reactions are appreciated. Also, friends, as you check these out, if you see anything you think is incredible, make sure you click on it and give it a reaction. Absolutely love checking out these new designs, including an awesome rocket ship. That's fantastic. I do also want to highlight that you can see what other people are making in Tinkercad circuits. And you can also check out the code blocks. And of course, over here, you can give reactions as well. One final shortcut, if you are checking these out and you turn on staff picks, let's quickly switch to sorted by reactions and check it out. Here is a picnic table. If you ever see tutorial or lesson included, that means it's one of mine. So of course you get a tutorial. Just another hack friends, if you click on the name HL Mod Tech, you'll be able to instantly find all of my tutorials for code blocks, circuits, or 3D designs. Friends, as I wrap up, I just want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. I've got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of awesome categories. And then below that, you can find my day one favorites and also useful starters. And then finally, the Tinkercad essentials. Friends, also at the bottom corner, I want to share the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Lastly, friends, don't forget the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, we've got more than 700 members, and it is a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.